Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, got a cool video for you guys. You actually voted for it. You wanted best duo build combinations. And I was hoping this one would win. I've put it in there a couple times to see if you guys would be interested. And I think this is actually a great time to talk about this. Because we're, we have a big patch right around the corner. Everybody's about to get a second character slot. And I'm getting PMs every day. What should I play? What's the meta? I'm coming back after six months to make a new character. Please, what do I play? Right. So I think this is a really good time to explore these characters again, these builds again, and then also combine them to talk about how they would work together. So maybe you want to come to Mortal for the first time with your friend, build some characters together. You're trying to figure out what to play. You can send this to your buddy and you guys can kind of choose like, oh, this would probably work really well together. Uh, then you could also be the type of person, you're two veterans and you're just building your second character. So revisiting like what what do I currently have? So I already have a dex footy. What do I need? I, I don't have a mage. I'd like to try that. Let's go the like polar opposite. Let's go from the fastest fuckboy in the game to the biggest, tankiest, slow mage in the game. Like total opposite sides of the spectrum. So I'll be talking about these builds first, combining the same builds together. So dex footy and dex footy. And then I'll go down the diagonal line here and I'll talk about how they work. That's going to be the longest part of the video, me kind of explaining what these builds are so you have a frame of reference. So, you know, if you skip to the end or maybe you want to see a specific combination, if you want to see Mounted Mage with Dex Mage and like see how that would work, right? So we do like this box and this box here. So let's say you want to look at this box. You're going to have to kind of look through the video to find that specific talking point and you can just kind of scroll until you see where the the font lines up because I'll just go in order here. I'll just be like stitching through as I go. Uh, but I would also say, you know, rewind back to the beginning of this video here where you have me talking about Mounted Mage specifically when I'm comboing Mounted Mage and Mounted Mage and when I'm talking about Dex Mage specifically because I'm going to talk a little bit more in the beginning about how the build works. But if you're interested in doing the deep dive on these builds and figuring out what they are and how they work, all you got to do is go to mo2builds.com. This is the website. If you're in, if you're a new player and you're looking for starter builds, you can actually see a breakdown of these different builds. Click on them and there's a video that explains how they work. You can also go to the veteran builds and get rizzed up by Hank Henrik. You body got rizzed up with another banger. <laughs> Shout out to Gab. Uh, but all these videos are listed in here and you can even see that we've got other creators in here. We've got um, the Lordus build is this mounted combat build. This Dex Mage build is by Demra, who's regarded as one of the best Dex Mages in the game. And then if we go to the community tab, if you're a new player or you're looking for a guild, we don't want that one. We want this one. We want the guild tab. You can actually filter by all these different guilds and find one that suits your needs. So if I wanted to look at the commerce side of things, I wanted to join Mana, on an all mage dedicated guild. I can actually see the guild master, their website if they have one, their Discord invite, and reach out to these people to potentially join their guild. And if I'm a guild owner or recruiter, all I got to do is click this survey button to get my guild listed here, and it normally takes me about 24 hours to get through them. Okay, so that's the introduction done. I'm going to start talking about these builds specifically. One last thing, because this is such a unique video. It's <laughs> such a long intro. I'm sorry, guys. I've done the intro like 20 times. We've got color coding here. So orange or brown here is foot fighter. Teal or blue here is mage, dedicated mage. Purple is hybrid. Green is tamer. And then dark blue is mounted focused. The box, pick any box, the bottom line and the right wall are the corresponding lines. So I can see that this box right here, randomly chosen, the bottom line is hybrid. So I've got Dragon Knight and the right line would be a foot fighter. So I can look up and I see, oh, it's a barbarian. So that's how I could just visually look at this chart. So if you know that you're going to be looking for a specific combination, maybe you want to do double hybrid, double foot fighter, or a dex mage and a foot fighter, that type of stuff, you can use this color code to just visualize what these builds actually are. Because I know that not everybody is familiar with what the gorilla build is, you know, because the name is a little bit weird. But I'm going to first talk about the combination of these two. So imagine two of the same builds together. I'll talk about how those builds kind of work and we'll get started. Okay, intro done. I can relax. Okay, I'm going to be talking for a long time. Bear with me, guys. Haha, <laughs> bear. A little bit of bear build down here. Anyways, double dex footy. I would say that this build falls under probably A tier. 
for a couple reasons. You and your buddy are learning the game. You can run away from everything. You're still the fastest builds in the game. These used to be a lot more meta. When the game was new and everybody was learning, speed was king because you could just kind of feel out a situation and leave that situation. You can still do that, but the meta has really shifted from being a dex footy to the more well-rounded builds. Death Knights, Dragon Knights, um, dedicated Ogmiras, uh, dedicated like Dark Archers, like some, picking something specifically and being really, really good at it. Dex footies are one of the highest skill cap builds in the game. They're generally the guys on your team that you want to be the best mechanical players because they need to go into enemy lines, kill mages, and get out. Most guys can go in, kill mages, but they can't get out. So running two of these, you'll be able to do certain things really well. You'll be able to dungeon delve really well. So like Undercroft or uh, the Vault. Both of those have multiple exit points, and you can just run past mobs. And if you're a dex footy, you can just leave them in the dust, and anybody trying to follow you will pick up aggro. Uh, and you can get out of bad situations, even, you know, 2v. You come around the corner, you see Kodo with like 50 dudes in the dungeon, even though it's a five man dungeon. You can still get out of there and outpace anybody on their team by playing dex footy. So playing together um, might be a decent way to learn the game, but realize the builds are pretty weak at this point. I'd say the dex footy probably needs a small, very small buff, um, but still super fun. If you're a Hot Wheels guy, you like to go fast, still super fun. Could be a really nice combo together. Two of the gorilla builds. So we're looking at two dedicated tanky Ogmirs. I would say this is definitely below average for running together. The synergy is there. It's not F tier. You play the same way. You're a slow meatball moving around the battlefield, crack piping, keeping yourself up. Uh, you're really hard to remove from the battlefield if played efficiently. It's a very beginner friendly build. But playing with two of these guys, you don't really get any other benefits like you're one is enough in most cases you're not going to be able to catch anybody that gets away from you if there's a dedicated mage god forbid a mounted mage uh you're going to be just like trying to z take each other take turns zoning them out with a bow while the other guy heals it'll be rough um one thing that i'd say about doing this is it like if you really both want to play Ogmirs, there's nothing wrong with it you know, the game is obviously bigger than just two people on a team. Um, so you make yourself extremely attractive to guilds. The Ogmir is one of the most meta foot fighters right now. Always has been, honestly. Um, it's the tankiest frontline guy that has the best action economy from the foot fighter perspective. So they're very highly sought after by guilds. So if you're looking to join a guild and they see you're, you have an Ogmir that you want to bring in, they probably look a little bit more favorably upon you. Um, so, yeah, it's it's very team fight centric and if you're just doing this with a friend to learn the game, you might have some problems. It'd be really good as a a second character if you if you want like a dedicated footy that's like the best frontline foot fighter. The barbarian. This so this is a Thursar. I would say this is probably F tier for two of these builds. Now, something to consider, just a quick talking point we've got the second character slot right around the corner. My advice to people is kind of pick two opposite sides of the spectrum. If you're even slightly interested in mage, or maybe you already have one, Thursar could be really fun for a dedicated foot fighter. If you're a, a big ego type of guy, you like doing ego duels, having a dedicated Thursar, probably a Calard with Stig and Throw, is you know the meta foot fighting dueling class, especially for those ego type of duels. These characters generally play backline. They peel for mages because they're big, they're, so they're such an easy mage target, and they're slow, so they can't get out, and they're also hard to heal because of the way that their build works. Thursars are also the least flexible class or race in the game. You're not going to be able to play mage with them. Um, they are getting small buffs as time goes on. I still think they need another small buff to make them a little bit more well-rounded, um, which, you know, honestly, I don't, maybe not, because one, one thing that's charming about this game is, you know, there are guys that are really, really good at some things, but can't do other things. So there's this economy there that feels really good. Uh, and to avoid the things like that WoW did, where every, every class can do everything now, uh, maybe they don't need a buff, but they, they're definitely foot fight focused. 
So having two of them that are big, slow, can't catch people, also have terrible self-healing, um, I would not do that. That would probably be one of the worst two combos to start the game with. Mana King. So if you look up Mana King, the build, I would suggest going to the raid boss build, which is much more modern, uh, and then taking pets away from it and running a full Sardukin mage. That's what I envision Mana King as today. When I made the video, Elementalism wasn't even out. It was a theory crafting video. But if you do full Sardukin obese human fat mage today, it's extremely meta. It is the best team fight mage right now in the game for anything above a skirmish. So anything like more than five players on each team, the human really comes into play because the pace of combat is dictated by mana bars today. And when the mana bar runs out, your team has to play ridiculously different, if that makes sense. So these guys get mana back faster than anybody. They can sit and regenerate mana faster than anybody. Um, so mana is king here. And these guys would be a dedicated team fight build that does not have pets. So you'd pick up defensive stance. You'd pick, maybe pick up meditation to get your mana back faster when you pull out and sit down. Um, so this would be a dedicated mage. You could comfortably run five greater walkers on both of these guys so if you had two of them you're leveling up with your buddy um i would caution you against doing this as a new player so if you're a veteran and you can send a huge chunk of gold to your new character you can get yourself a fully scribed lexicon um and give them a big leg up you're gonna have a much easier time making this character mages generally take a long time to get online but if you throw money at the problem it speeds it up dramatically so i would really caution you if you're two new players looking to make your first character i would not do double mana king it's going to be pretty brutal i'd say this is probably d tier um you might be able to you know if you don't have the pets you might be able to get mounted mage so you could kind of go like a more dedicated mounted mage um than this guy over here i'll talk about this guy when i get to him but uh, i'd say this is probably below average again same same thing as the ogmers though the Mana King, the full Sardukin, is super attractive to guilds. So if you're looking to join a bigger guild and contribute to team fights, and that's where your main interest for the game is, super good. Don't let it deter you that they're just not good as a duo. Dex Mage, double Dex Mage. Ah, man, this is probably S tier, right? If we're thinking about the memes, right, um, and the PvP and the synergy, you are rat fox right demra's little picture here is a rat he's a rat fuck he's one of the best mages in the game his dex mage build is fantastic you can play these as like bony or skeletal to be super fast or you can play these as like bulging to be um a more team fight focused version pound for pound dex mage is probably still the best scrimmish mage so five and below because they start to really have mana problems as fights get prolonged but being able to kite for themselves, being able to peel for themselves, and, and especially if you have blocking and you have good defense, you can parry up and drag a foot fighter to your friendly foot fighter very easily in a skirmish. Um, so they can also jump over shit. They can jump up onto buildings. They can jump over fences. They can do all kinds of shit to kind of just be an annoying rat. Um, so super good combination to run together. Uh, we'll change the color of the S to red to make it a little bit easier to spot the really really good combinations um two dragon knights so dragon knights are i imagine them kind of like a cleric they can they can run light medium armor and have good mana regeneration they can run super tanky armor and be um one mana bar guys um i've got this guy and then there's also the death knight that's not listed here so death knight would be kind of meta i have paladin here so Paladin, I'd say, is a little bit more magic-focused, magic-centric in the sense that you're just going to be a support character. Uh, you're just going to be healing with your mana bar. You're not going to be pumping any damage. Dragon Knight would be somebody that can pump damage. It's going to be running really slow, um, going to be focused on team fights, low dex build, high mana bar, being able to chuck out a couple fireballs before the fight starts, throw it on a firewall as you guys retreat back through the line uh, with Tactician to peel for your entire team, um, that type of stuff. Running two of these guys kind of suffers from the same thing that the Ogmirs and the Thursars would. I'd say this is probably average, though. I'd say this is probably, you know, um, C tier. 
mostly because it's so flexible. So while you're leveling your characters together, playing with your buddy, uh, one guy can, you know, kind of gear his play style towards a certain thing. And then the other guy can like do something completely different. And then you can homogenize those builds and, and kind of go towards the same target as time goes on and as leveling figures itself out. Also, full Tindra McHuman is probably the white bread of the, the game. You can do everything. So if this is your first character, I would suggest that you know this is, this is a good first character to look at because it is somewhat beginner friendly. The high end of the build... I know I'm talking a lot about it a lot, but the really high-end versions of the Dragon Knight can be really expensive kit-wise. But you can run this as a cheapo learner, beginner, grinder set and not have a problem. Um, so it's a really good build to kind of figure out how to play the game on, figure out what you like and what you don't like about the game, and then you can rotate into something more specific on your second character. If this is a veteran character, and you're a veteran player, and you're doing this for your second account, this would be something that you build dedicated for dungeons so going out with your boys you never step off without your team um this is you know good for that apex build um so this is the build that i came up with where you run underweight or or lean and then you have two big ass decks rings two, like eight raw decks you really need seven but eight eight raw decks brings you up to um super high speed so you're the fastest build in the game short of like a skeletal that's running the same thing which nobody runs uh, but fastest build in the game dagger mage dagger hybrid really with enough mana to earthquake death hand death hand and then stab stab and and they die the idea here is it's a one pump chump it's a rotation you knock people off their horse or you um basically fo hard focus somebody down blow them up with magic and finish them with a dagger or start with a dagger and then finish them with magic however you want to do it um but super fast build uh total glass cannon designed to remove one person from the battlefield and then you got to step back out right you got to reset so the downside of that is it's not really team fight focused it's cool because you can take one person out of the fight but uh there's a lot of downtime once you've you know more or less pumped your chump right um so two of these guys together you'd be able to like take on other duos really well if you're both really good this take this this build requires like near perfect play you get really punished if you don't because you're sitting at like 150 160 health so uh if you mess up or overextend yourself and you're you know you have a dex footy on your ass hitting you with a sword while you're trying to get out uh you'll probably die so Two of these guys, I'd say this is probably C tier. You know, it's it's going to be a lot harder to play than a Dex Footy, um, but at the same time, it's probably more fun. Like you could do a whole bunch of crazy shit. You can fireball on this build. You can have walkers on this build. You hit really hard with your dagger. You're faster than the Dex Footy. So I mean, I'd probably have. Eh, we bump it up to B tier. It's probably two of these guys would be fun, but you're as soon as you. Uh, are out of the fight because you killed someone. You're you're spending a lot of time resetting. Two paladin builds. Uh, so paladin. Um, two of these guys. I'd say it's probably the same as dragon knight. I think as I go through this, the dragon knight and the paladins are going to be more or less the same. Uh, for the sake of conversation, I think what I'll say is the dragon knight is a little bit more advanced. Uh, you're fully fleshed out, and the paladin is a little bit more beginner friendly. Like you're a noob. And you're just got like AQ and stuff. The Dex Dex Foot Archer. Um, sorry, I forget how to pronounce your your channel name. Uh, this this is on the website hemo2builds.com. This this is kind of a meme build. It's a Foot Archer with Necro. Uh, so it's an Alvaran has uses the biggest longbow that an Alvaran can, and then makes greater walkers and peels for themselves with speed and with greater walkers. Uh, also can use Death Hand. So a couple videos on this are out. It looks really fun to play. I've been meaning to make the build and kind of try it out myself just for fun because, you know, cheesing walkers on people and like blowing people up with, with sacrificial eruption. That stuff is hilarious. So from a meme potential, uh, <laughs> from a meme potential, oh crap, why did it do that? Let's see here. So from a meme potential, we'll go memes. Two of these would be like S plus. Uh, 
everything else, I'd say this is like two of these would be like, I don't know, C tier, maybe, meh, maybe D tier. It's not going to be beginner friendly even a little bit. Um, <laughs> uh, but it would be hilarious and it would probably be pretty fun to run if this was your first ever. Uh... Oh, come on. Okay. Anyways, yeah, two two of those would be interesting. Uh, Ninja Turtle build. Running two of these would be interesting. It's it's pretty similar to Dragon Knight. It's got Necro. It's got EQ. It's got. It doesn't have Ellie, uh, but you can run a full Foot Fighter build with a turtle slapped on the side. So it's a low dex build, two hundred and twenty mana, built around team fighting in dungeons. Two of these together would suffer from the same things that uh, a lot of these other combinations suffer from, like very low synergy. Like you don't have any. Real balance there. I'd say it's probably C tier, just like the other double humans. It's flexible enough that you can figure out what you like to do and then go from there. The double raid boss build. Oh man, this is this is up there, man. I'd say two of these would probably be A tier. Big big caveat: do not do this unless this is your second character. This is you're a veteran player. This build is extremely expensive. You have to run the best shit, otherwise you're really going to struggle. Uh, stepping just out the gate, you're spending hundreds of gold per kit, easily, very easily. There's no real way to play this uh, budget-friendly. You're using the best pets in the game, with the best armors in the game, a full set of the best stuff for mages. you got Panzer Scale on your, and on your chest and everything. You're I mean, your spirit box costs more than a steel sword by itself. So it's expensive uh, and really time-consuming to get going. So if you're veteran players, specifically if you're veteran mages and you understand how to play mage really well, this is extremely powerful to do as a duo. You can imagine two Campadons or two max level Terror Birds. Now it's going to be Tar Dogs. So you got two max level Tar Dogs as your pet. Both of those are in Tongue Steel or better. You've got, uh, if you have the prep time, each person has 12 Greater Walkers at mana neutral. Each person has 270 plus mana. Uh, they're wearing a fat ass Tower Shield that they can toggle on or off. You could just do like the biggest, fattest Tower Shield possible because you're not really going to be running away from things and become this like unkillable turtle you have 130 intellect so your lesser heals hit for 30 plus uh, super super powerful build one of the most powerful builds in the game by a lot at this point um running two of them would just be kind of disgusting but it really caution you guys you have to know how to play mage and play it really well specifically a slow mage if the only thing that you've ever played is a dex mage and your default is run away and kite and i and not and nothing else you're going to struggle uh learning this but if you do commit and you learn it it is so fun so rewarding fucking up a thursar at point blank range the guy who hits harder than anybody with death hand just like turning his own actions against him and leeching his own health healing yourself hitting him like a fucking truck and three tapping a thursar at point blank range while sprinting and like moving around and shit oh man it feels fucking good but it's one of the hardest things to do effectively in the game right and they keep fucking with magic so who knows where it's going to be at uh, mounted mage. I have this listed under the tamer section, just like the raid boss build, because mounted mages today are different than they used to be. A dedicated mounted mage today almost always has a pet. It could be two dire wolves. It could be a tar dog. Uh, no, nah, not really tar dogs, unless you're uh, unless you're using ritualism. Uh, but it could be a fucking turtle. It could be whatever. It could be any pet, or even a mulva. Right, so you know, having a huge health pool, or even a bear today, you're riding the bear and just using it for its massive health pool. Uh, so you really have to have some pets with you to be a dedicated mounted mage today. And the arcane archer, the dark archer, all those stuff are different because this build doesn't. It sacrifices archery and picks up pets. If that makes sense. Um, so the mounted mages today. You know, running two of these would probably be annoying as fuck. Like, fighting two Mount of Mages, you can't imagine much worse stuff. Um, there are, you know, it's... 
where am I going with this? So most tamers, when they're learning the game, they fucking suck. A lot of people also gravitate towards mounted mounted skills in general when they're learning the game because it's easier to stay alive. Your value is low unless you're really good. Like your efficiency on the battlefield, the damage throughput that you're you're putting out, the support that you're giving to your team is lower than somebody on foot who is really good as well, unless you're a dark archer. That's the exception here. Uh, So the mounted mage stuff, uh, expect to burn through a lot of pets while learning how to do this. Um, Expect to get earthquaked a couple times when, before you learn, like everybody has earthquake now. Um, so this build used to be like super meta, super crazy, overpowered, but they've added dismounts, they've added Earthquake, they've added a couple different tools to deal with the Mounted Mage themselves. And I'd say this is probably pretty middle of the road, but if you had two of these and you could peel for each other, and then you could also do Greater Walkers and have a Pets, and you could be a little moving army. It's like baby raid boss build, kind of. Baby Dark Archer, right? Uh, mounted Combat, this is Lordis's build, so this would be like a max height Thursar Calard with Min, Lances, and other, and Mounted Combat slapped on the side with, you know, all the other foot fighting things. Um, two of these, I'd, I'd say it suffers from the Barbarian problem, but not as bad. I'd say this is probably D tier to run two of these, because you have the additional utility of being able to do Mounted Combat. So out in the open world, you'll be able to dismount people a lot easier and take the fight to the ground where you are powerful. Powerful. Uh, so lances is a good example of a way to get people off their horse, um, and then also you can just straight up kill people. So if you you know let's say you use swords as your primary, you have all your points and swords, you could get like a messing two handed Rizar sword for your mounted weapon, and then switch to a regular sword when you get to the ground um, with mounted charge. Yeah, mounted combat itself is the hardest hitting horseback stuff in the game. Because you have mounted charge, if both of your characters are moving quickly, momentum kicks in, adds damage. It's actually not based on your momentum alone, but also the enemy's momentum. So it seems weird, but if both of you guys are riding side by side and you're you're actively chasing and trying to hit this target, his speed also benefits your damage, even though he's going the same direction as you. So physically in real life, that wouldn't make sense. In this game, it's based off of character's current move speed that's how they do the damage calculation so if both of you guys are riding side by side this is one of the best hunter killer builds in the game mounted combat is kind of a direct counter to mounted mage if you can connect with them it's extremely hard for a mounted mage to break off of you and and survive the fight um so mounted combat's in a pretty good spot it used to be a total meme it's in a pretty good spot now running two of these would be okay slightly below average you know a mage enters the fight, you're going to have a hard time. Uh, but it's it's not terrible. Two dark archers, on the other hand, um, we're just going to copy this S here. And we're going to paste it. And we're going to move this down here. And we're going to drop it in. We're going to add a little plus. Because, oh, man, like two dark archers, man. I can't imagine. I've I've both fought with these guys on my team. I've fought against them. Fighting two of them at the same time, We'll take a fucking army to kill these guys, man. You, They have no hard counters in the game. Earthquake is probably the biggest counter to them right now. You'd have to get on your horse, fourth gear directly into them, connect with them before they melt your horse with their 22% pierce max mounted archery skills, um, land the skill shot Earthquake, then kill them before they get back onto their horse and, and dip out. Extremely hard to do. Um, they are min-maxed to the nine to win every single fight handedly and not lose even a little bit. There's multiple different types of Dark Archers, so if you're maybe not interested, maybe you don't want to run the same exact build, one guy can run the one listed on the screen here. That's a human version. There's also an Ogmir version that is really, really good. Um, so you can kind of min-max it to you know play slightly different play builds if you want but two of these guys together is brutal man it's the best mounted build in the game you can heal your horse you have full mounted archery you have combat pets you have uh near endless mana you can carry a an army of walkers with you um you're full mounted mage you have it's completely dedicated to the outside world so the downside is you don't get to go into dungeons and stuff but brutal absolutely brutal build uh you scale it up times two it's going to be even more brutal the mounted archer uh two of these guys uh let's see i'd say this is probably b 
plus. Yeah, probably like a B plus style. Again, the the white bread of the game, the most vanilla thing right now is mounted archer, a full tendramic human, but extremely flexible. Like you have the utility here uh, to dismount enemy horses or dismount enemy players. Um, people don't realize that the fights, you know, fights don't get resolved until somebody gets off their mount. Either they're knocked off their mount or their mount is killed. So if you want fights to resolve, whether that be you kill them or you get away, uh, then you need to be able to deal with the mount and kill it. Uh, so mounted archer is pretty good, especially if you're learning, right? Running two of these uh, when you're both learning the game would probably be pretty good. Uh, I wouldn't dedicate a, you know, I'm a veteran player. I wouldn't dedicate a character specifically to this build. Once you're a veteran, you understand the core mechanics of the game. Maybe you go arcane archer instead of dark archer because you like to go into towns more. Um, maybe you rotate more into the foot fighting side. You become more of like a death knight or paladin down the road after you've done the mounted archer stuff. Um, so, you know, okay. I'd say two of them would be like B plus. Uh, the bear lancer, uh, I'd, say, I'd say this is probably like B, B minus. Right now, a lot of people are testing it out. The meta is kind of still shaping itself up to see how useful the Bear Lancer is actually going to be. Um, it has the potential to counter Dark Archer if you can use your Black Bear sprint really, really, really well. Uh, because the Black Bear is faster than the horses that the Dark Archer is going to be riding. You could potentially connect with them, land the Lance hit dismount them it's going to be really hard because they have balance but if you successfully dismount the mounted archer you might or the dark archer you might be able to kill him with your lance so it could be a pseudo counter to the dark archer but um you know currently uh meta still shaping up you're still a, a dedicated this one is an augmer so you're still a, an augmer which is super valuable you can go into dungeons because your black bear is not useless in a dungeon like a horse would be. Uh, your speed isn't terrible. Uh, you still get value from your pet doing damage and like doing PVE stuff. So running two of these would probably be pretty fun. And now that I'm thinking about like the the dynamic of having two bear archers or two two bear lancers, uh, because a dark archer can avoid one pretty easily. Avoiding two might be really hard. Uh, so if you're really good, running double Lancer could be really fun. And it also would look cool. I mean, you roll out with your boy, both of you have a fucking bear. You're riding a bear and you have a Lance. Like, it would look dope as shit. Uh, so the rule of cool, the meme potential says that this is like an S-tier combo. But yeah, so that's all the builds. That's kind of the deeper dive that I'm going to do in this video. Again, check out every build specifically, the video associated with it specifically for the deep, deep dive. Uh, but we're going to go through, I'm going to start to try and speed this up because I have a lot of boxes to fill here. And I'm going to talk about um, the the actual different combos now. So we got Dex Footy and Ogmir. I'd say this is probably D or would say this E tier. This is uh, not good, right? Um, main reason being they're complete two completely different play styles both of them pretty inflexible um one guy can is lightning fast the other guy's super slow if you're a dex footy you rely on your speed for a lot of things if you're playing with an ogmir as your friend you're really kind of tied to him like you're as fast as your slowest member um so he's slowly chugging across the battlefield you can't really just like leave them behind. You're tied to his speed, more or less. So navigating through the world is going to be a little bit more difficult. Taking fights will be a little bit more difficult because you can't... It feels really bad to leave your friend behind. Like, you'd never want to do that, right? Um, so like, sorry, bro. You're... See ya, right? That that type of feeling feels bad. You'll have that a lot with the Ogmir because he'll be stuck in fights. He, he literally cannot leave, right? And you might get... If you're new, you might be like, bro, just fucking... Why did you take that fight? Just get out. Get on your horse, like, right away. Bro, I can't. Like, I literally cannot do that as an Ogmir. So there might be some frustration there for this combo. Uh, it would be even worse for the Thursar Dex Footy um, because they are easier to kill than the Ogmir and they have a lot less utility. Uh, this combo, Sardukan Human dedicated Fat Mage with a Footy would be lower. Uh, I'd say this is probably D tier. It doesn't really work super well. Uh, I mean, two different play styles. This character is going to be moving slow. It's going to rely on... If you're going to do a footy mage combo and you're playing this mage, you want a beefier footy with you as your, air quotes, bodyguard, more or less, uh, to be able to peel people off of you while you're in turtle mode. Uh, Dex mage. Uh, this 
This, on the other hand, is super fucking good. Uh, I'd say that this combo here is probably S+. plus. Come on, Red. Yeah, this is probably S+. plus. Uh, one of the best duo combos in the game. Dex Footy and Dex Mage. You're, you're able to keep pace with each other. You're able to outpace almost anybody. You get all the utility of a Dex Mage. You get the uh, speed and you know, protection from your foot fighter. Um, so he can peel other Dex Footies off of you, and you can reset fights a lot easier. These builds really rely on resetting. So you kill somebody, you reset, you string the fight out, you reset, you kill, you reset, you kill, you reset, you know what I mean? So these combos synergize extremely well, uh, and you can just be the best rat combo in the game running these. These are super, super fun to play together, super, super fun to get good at, um, kind of hard to get good at, requires a lot of game sense to be able to play that way and be effective but when you get good at these things super rewarding feels super fun um and you know if you if your buddy wants to play a, a specific play style you know you can pick one you do you want to be the mage or do you want to be the footy and that, to me that feels balanced that feels kind of cool uh dex footy plus human like not the worst thing in the world i'd say this is probably c tier um yeah not the worst thing in the world but Again, two different play styles. He's able to hit hard enough to peel for you. Um, you get some utility out of him. Um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, nothing to write home about. I wouldn't be like super jazzed on that build. Uh, the Apex and the Soaking. I'd say this is probably B+. Plus. This combo is pretty disgusting. Um, it really accentuates on the get in, kill somebody, and reset. Uh, the deck's footy would be more responsible for zoning while this guy gets mana back and kind of the, after you do your pump and you kill somebody with the apex build or you get them really low and remove them from the fight, uh, you have just enough mana trickling in to be able to heal a little bit. So your role for the apex build, is you're a hybrid. You start the fight by just trying to absolutely remove somebody from existence. And then the fight becomes a string out fight where you're kiting, you're working with your dex footy, and you become the hybrid uh, healer. You become the support on the apex build, and you're faster than your dex footy, because remember, you're running underweight with seven raw decks, and he, and you're also a Vila Vila, like him, so you can run away, kite it out, and you should be farther away from the enemies than your footy. Your footy should be the guy in the middle, you should be still stringing them out, still kiting away, uh, but you that gives you time to reset, to get some heals in, to top everybody back up, maybe uh, find a place to take your armor off and sit down in some shadows or whatever. And you know, It could be fun. It could be fun. I'd say it's not like anything to ride home about, but still pretty fun. Uh, same thing as Paladin, uh, Paladin and Dragonite. I'd say this is middle of the road. Excuse my burp. Uh, this build, so Dex, Footy, and the Dex, Foot Archer, I mean, uh, I'd say it's probably the same as Apex, like, wildly different play styles, but could synergize pretty well. Uh, yeah, it'd probably be plus, right? Ultimate rat combo type stuff. Uh, would be fun. Would be fun. Yeah. Um... Ninja Turtle build, so the low dex Dungeon Manger build with this guy That'd be like an F tier combo. Um, it, I honestly want to rate these a little bit lower now that I'm thinking about like how bad that combo is. It's not as bad as those. It's it's worse than those because it's slower. This is a low dex build. You're running at 380. This guy's running at 450, right? So like <laughs> the speed difference, you you literally leave your friend in the dust all the time. Um yeah. With the raid boss build, again, this is probably one of the worst combos to have. Your the build is really focused around the guy who's spending hundreds and hundreds of golds to, to step out the gate. It's really focused around the mage and his pet because it allows you to do a lot more as a group. But if I'm running this build and you're running a dex footy, there's almost no value that you add that somebody else couldn't do better. In fact, there is none. Like every other build on here, I'd be like, I'd rather you be that. 
if I'm on the raid boss build. So I'd say that's F tier. Mounted Mage. Um, I'd say this is like D. Eh, you know, having a pocket mounted mage in the open world is great. So the dex made or the dex footy really excels in a dungeon, being able to like kite past PVE mobs and reset fights and exit any fight they don't want to take. Uh, and the mounted mage exists in the outside world. It really it is good in the outside world, but sucks in dungeons. Uh, but can still bring pets into dungeons. So you can compensate a lot for each other's weaknesses out in the open world. Uh, your footy might be kiting through an open field and you can just keep healing them like crazy until they eventually win the fight or get out of the fight. And in a dungeon, you protect your mounted mage who's got a few pets to peel for himself, but not really dungeon worthy uh, and keep each other alive, more or less. So it'd be like middle of the road. It wouldn't be like the worst thing in the world. It would be, if you did this build, if you did mounted mage and dex footy, I would expect you to both be new players trying to learn the game. It would be a decent way to learn the game without spending a ton of money per kit and figuring out how to do what, what you like and what you don't like. Mounted combat, and so like um, Lordis's build, so Max Height Callard with mountain co mounted combat kind of slapped on the side with a dex footy. No, like not a huge fan. It's better than the Barbarian. I'd say it's probably D tier because it has the mounted combat utility, but very mid. Um, this one, this one's a little bit difficult to rate. I'm going to be a little bit biased with the Dark Archer. I think it's one of the best, most overpowered builds in the game right now. So combining it with Dex Footy, Dex Footy is one of the only builds that could like keep up with this on foot, would be able to zone uh, and give you time to react so that you can maybe land that extra heal as the Dark Archer uh, and zone out the enemy a little bit better um, and kite away from Greater Walkers and not get just enveloped and you know stuff like that. Um, but if I'm the Dark Archer and you're on the Dex Footy, you're not adding too much value. I'd rather you be on a Dex Footy than an Ogmir or a, or a Thursar, but almost everything else on this build here, I would rather you be on that than the Dex Footy, if that makes sense. The Dar or the Mounted Archer and the Dex Footy, I would say this is probably middle of the road, maybe C plus. Like I would expect this from two beginner players. Um, when you get into a fight. Out in the open world, the mounted archer is really going to be the guy who's dismounting, and then the dex footy can be the guy that hunts down mages and kills them because the mounted archer is going to have a, a harder time doing that. Um, so the symbi the synergy and the symbiosis between those two builds is actually not terrible. C plus, maybe B minus, uh, would be pretty good for that. Bear lancer, uh, same thing. Uh, C plus, you know, not not the worst thing, not the best thing. Slightly above average. Okay, so now we're doing Thursar and Ogmir. Um, you know, I'd say this is actually not terrible. This is probably B plus, maybe even A tier. Uh, we'll do A minus. Um, this is not bad. You have more flexibility than the double Ogmir. You have more flexibility than the double Thursar. Um, you have one guy that can self heal. Um, you know, this, I don't know. Now that I'm looking at this, I rated these so poorly. Keep in mind, guys, I play a mage. I'd say this is B plus. Um, mostly because you have different options now. Um, if you're a dedicated Ogmir and dedicated front fighter, foot fighter, you could add mounted archery to your build and have a pretty decent mounted archery build. You could add mounted combat to your build for the Thursar and have decent builds. These get a lot better when you add on uh, utility that makes you more than just a dungeon focused character. Maybe you are the type of person who wants to just play in the dungeon. That's fine. Uh, you know, min max builds are there for a reason. They exist for a reason. They are fun to play. Um, but if you combine the Ogmir and the Thursar, you have one guy who's really hard to kill, who has a lot of self sustain and healing. You have another guy who has the highest damage in the game, can peel for other people better than anybody in the game, but also gets blown up and has lifesteal. Lifesteal allowing you to kill pets very, very easily. Um, you'll struggle anytime a fight is in the open world. You'll struggle anytime that there's a, there's a dex mage. Um, and you'll struggle against really good Sardukan mages. Um, fuck, man, this is I'd say this is C plus. I'm I'm changing my mind. I think that if you combo these, I'm rating it as if I'm thinking they have other utility. If you add in these guys, they'll 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 do more favorably than than that combo. Sorry, I'm ranting. 
This whole video is me ranting. I'll probably break it into two parts. Maybe even three. Okay. Mana King. Sardukin and Ogmir. This is really good. Um, B plus. Maybe even A minus. Yeah, we'll go A minus. Um, this is really good because both play styles are more or less the same. They're very slow moving. They're very durable. They exist for action economy purposes. Um, he hits hard enough to peel for you. Um, you exist as a support role. You can heal like crazy. You can keep yourself alive. You can put pets on the side. There's a whole bunch of different things you can do. We've got Gorilla and the Dex Mage build. Um, you know, probably not as good as you'd think. We'll throw this in D tier. He's a decent peeler. Um, but same stuff suffers from the same problems that the Dex footy and the Ogmir would. Is you're really as slow as fast as your slowest weak. Oh, God, I'm struggling. As fast as your slowest link. Uh, so the gorilla being slowest, uh, you're really kind of stuck to him. You can rotate around him and, and kind of kite out around him, but it's not going to be very fun. The Flame Knight, the Dragon Knight, and the Gorilla. Actually, not like the worst thing in the world. I'd say this is probably like B+. Because it's so flexible, um, you can really tailor your, tailor your play style. If you notice that in team fights you're not getting focused very much, maybe you want to go lighter armor, rely more on that tower shield, have more mana regen, and then also keep you, you play the more support role, that's fine. If you both want to go super beefy, super beefy, God, I'm struggling here, super beefy tank, um, you can do that. The Dragon Knight with Ockbond is one of the tankiest builds in the game, uh, and then you can rotate in and be the support, and you can kind of, kind of flex as the Dragon Knight while your Ogmir holds the line and peels for you anytime you need to uh, get some healing in on both of you guys. The Apex build comboing the Gorilla with the Apex build would be terrible. It'd be one of the worst combos that you can run. Comboing the Gorilla with the the Paladin would be more or less the same as the Dragon Knight. Comboing it with the Dex Foot Fighter would be fucking hilarious, uh, but really not that good. So like D minus. Comboing it with the Ninja Turtle build would actually be really fucking good. Um, I'd say this is probably A minus. Um, you're both really slow. You run roughly the same speeds. And, you know, if he's full dex, he's running at like 418 or something. You're running at 380. Uh, you could also lower your dex so you run at the same speeds if you wanted to. You're not going to get much value out of it as the as the Ogmir, but slapping a you know, max level turtle or like a water lizard or something on the side with your build, and then also being more or less a death knight, having good armor, good mana, good everything. Um, Full Ellie, like this build is actually really, really flexible. It's a tin driving human, obviously, um, but you could you could really gear the playstyle to be uh, really symbiotic and work together. The raid boss build, I'd say this is pretty good, man. This is probably a minus as well. Maybe we'll go B plus. Um, not the best peeler in the game. I can jump in and say that the the Thursar is going to be the best peeler in the game. Maybe this is just straight A tier. Um, the Ogmir and the Raid Boss both have insane action economy. You do a lot more with less, so that's a benefit, but at that point, like the Raid Boss is so dominant on the battlefield. It's such a focus. You've got 12 greater walkers, you've got a max level pet, you're healing, you, you're doing Ellie, you're doing all this crazy shit. Um, what really comes into play is killing motherfuckers, like actually raw damage. Uh, because in that situation, the Ogmir is almost never going to be the focus. The focus is going to be kill the fucking mage controlling the Ogmium Campadon. Uh, so what you really want is you want a really good peeler. So the Thursar would be a really good combination with the raid boss because it would peel a lot better than the Ogmir, but the Ogmir would probably be a close second. right? Uh, and we'll jump in and we'll do this combo here real quick. So we'll do... The raid boss, now that I'm thinking about it, with the mounted combat stuff. Yeah, so that would be this box. I, or we'll do mounted combat with raid boss, which would be... I will stay on this side of the line. would be this box here. That would be... 
Mm. Arguably better. So maybe A plus. Not an S tier build. Not an S tier combo, but like A plus. Like really good. Okay. Now let's talk about the Ogmir and the Mounted Mage combo. Um, like C plus. You're not going to be able to go into dungeons very well with the Mounted Mage, but you have roughly the same play style. If you go like full Sardukin and you really lean into that more than the pets, um, it'll be okay. Yeah, it'll be okay. Like Raid Boss is just straight better, but um, Mounted Mage would be okay. You have a bunch of dead stats anytime you get off your horse, so realize that. Gorilla and Mounted Combat. Um, 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 probably. Probably like C minus. Yeah, just probably not that good. Dark Archer, this is again gonna suffer here. This is probably one of the worst. You're not able to keep pace. He's gonna be feeling like he needs to support you way more than he should. Um, same with this guy. Yeah, uh, not adding any real value there. The Ogmir and the Mounted Archer. Um, I'd say this is probably like middle of the road, maybe like C minus. Um, you're going to rely on him almost entirely to dismount people. Same thing here. Uh, but if he can, uh, you can go to the ground and you have a lot more power. Okay. Uh, the bear lancer, hmm, same same thing. I'm just I'm just in a C mood right now. C minus C minus. Okay. These builds are so similar. I'm kind of rating them at the same time. Um, so. Let's talk about now the Barbarian, or the Thursar footy, with a full Sardukan human. Not terrible. Not not terrible. I'd say this is probably A tier. If an Ogmir is A-, minus, this is probably A, because the synergy is a little bit better. You get a lot of the downsides of Thursar fixed, so not having active health regen compared to the Ogmir who can crack pipe, and instead being situational health regen like, like Lifesteal. That stuff gets mitigated and fixed by having a fat mage there healing you. The downside is, you know, the healing is harder. You take up more action economy. The upside, though, the reason I rated it higher is because what we talked about already. You peel better than the Ogmir. You're slightly faster. You hit slightly harder. You have lifesteal, uh, so you can kill pets and things like that. Um, you'll be able to just remove some of the hardest counters to a mage like double direwolf is one of the hardest counters to any mage because it interrupts their spell casting because it's attacking so frequently and those mobs dance in and out of each other and make it so that hitting them is actually really hard thank god the meta is moving away from those but um if you have a thursar with you the thursar two taps wolves but more or less so it's really good for peeling that type of stuff off of your mage so it's the synergy is really there it's it's really not bad the Dex Mage and the Thursar, again, not as good as the Human, but pretty damn good. Pretty damn good. The Dragonite, I'd say this is probably like same as Ogmir. You're not going to have any real benefits, maybe even less than the Ogmir because you have less flexibility there. Same general playstyle, though, as if you were playing with an Ogmir. Um, the Apex build and that is going to be pretty bad. Uh, I'd say this is like D minus. Maybe even E tier. Um, totally different play styles. Not really symbiotic at, at all. Uh, the Paladin, uh, probably B tier as well. The Dex Foot Archer and this guy, again, like. For, uh, D. <laughs> like, it'd be hard. It's hard for me to even mentally imagine that. Um, this would probably be like B. Plus. B plus struggling. Um, comboing it with the Ninja Turtle build, very similar play styles. One can peel for the other. Um, both pretty hard to kill in a dungeon. On the open open world, it's really going to struggle. The Mounted Mage Thursar combo would probably be like a D minus. Um, it's always nice to have a Mounted Mage in your pocket, but like the second you want to go do anything else um, other than just like skirmish in an open field, uh, you'll get, you'll have some problems. Mounted combat. Uh, so this would be like a dedicated foot fighter with no mounted skill paired with a Lordis build that has a little bit of mounted skill. 
Um, or maybe you just are a dedicated mounted combat guy. Uh, like C+. Mounted combat has a place in the meta right now. It does certain things really well. Um, you have some utility, but again, it's nothing to write home about. Uh, full Sardukan Mage and Dex Mage. Mm, it's like C minus. I'd say it's below average. There's no real synergy there. You're both spellcasters. Cool. You can do like AOEs and stuff. You can do um, certain PVE better. You neither pet neither build is running pets. Um, the you know if you bolt these guys onto the side of a team, great. Now you have guys that can you have a flexible mage that can run away and peel for himself and kind of kite and scout a lot better. Uh, and then also you got the dedicated mana bar who's just you know constantly regaining mana and can kind of fill the role of um, occasional AOE and then also heal on top of it where the dex mage is really going to struggle in a prolonged fight. So like not the worst thing in the world, um, especially if you're playing for a bigger team situation, but. For like a duo, you're not going to get any real big value there. The Dragonite. I'd actually say this is probably like BB+. It's you know a very flexible build. Both of them are really flexible builds. They both can peel for each other. Um, it's not going to be like the best thing ever, but it'll be pretty good. The Apex build, this is probably like uh, E tier. E minus <laughs> basically after it's not it's not a good combo the paladin build and the mannequin build hmm the i'd say it's about the same as dragonite not too much different there those builds are very similar the foot one and that one you know weirdly i'd say this is not going to be bad because this playstyle, you would you would think the foot archer, the the Alvaran foot archer that's making greater walkers would want to run around too much, but they don't very. It doesn't run around that much. You uh, sometimes you're face to face with the enemy, just shooting them with a longbow at point, point blank range because it takes a ton of stamina to run around, and then it also takes a ton of stamina to shoot your bow. So you're often weaving in and out of greater walkers to peel for yourself, and if you have a fat ass. Mage there also making Grand Walkers for your team, just adding to the chaos, and then also healing you so that you can just face tank footies and shoot them in the face with a longbow while your Greater Walkers hit them, and then your guy heals for you. Um, it would be okay. You wouldn't really be able to do the opposite. You wouldn't be able to peel for your mage. So if they go on your mage, you're really going to struggle. Uh, but if your mage is good at turtling up and is running really expensive gear, um, it wouldn't be like the worst thing ever. Um, these two builds, I'd say this is really close to Paladin, maybe a little bit above Paladin, so this would be like A-, minus. This, you know, the Ninja Turtle build and the Mana King build work really, really well together. Um, he can heal your pet for you, so yeah, not bad. The Raid Boss build, um, I would say that two of these guys is probably like A tier, A-. minus. Um, at this point, I would just say, if you're going to do two of those, why wouldn't one of you, why wouldn't you just both do the raid boss build? That doesn't make any sense to me. Um, yeah, I, I rated it higher than two. I would say, eh, fuck it. We'll make this S tier. So this makes a little bit more sense. Because honestly, if you if you have two raid boss builds, they're going to be a fucking nightmare to take out and kill. Mounted Mage. So we got Mounted Mage and Sardukan Foot Mage. Um, I would say this is probably slightly below average. It's nothing special. All right. Now we're going to go mounted combat guy. So I think we'll get to the bottom of this row and then we'll pause. And we'll probably break it into a second video because I'm starting to get pretty tired of just talking at my computer screen, guys. Uh, so we've got the Sardukan Foot Mage and the Mounted Combat Lordis build. Actually pretty good. Uh, probably B+. He can peel for you really well. You have the Outer World utility. Um, this guy can 
probably pretty easily bolt Mounted Mage onto his build because he doesn't have pets. So it would probably be pretty good. Pretty good combo. Um, maybe even like A+. plus. Uh, yeah, that's a pretty good combo. The Dark Archer and the Mana King. It's probably like D tier. D minus maybe. Like really not that good. You're too slow. You can zone for yourself. Like the Mana King build by itself is okay because you can just make Greater Walkers and stuff like that. But Greater Walkers, it's always such like a attack on. It's so situational. You have to have made them prior. You have to get your mana back in time. Like the Dark Archer is a lot more fluid. It deals with the situation as the situation happens instead of prepping for it. Uh, well, you prep for it ahead of time, but like in the moment, because you're a dark archer, you have the ability to like ride behind the house and just make rear walkers on the spot. The mana king doesn't really have that, uh, so not not super good. The mounted archer and the mana king, nah, I'd say this is probably like B tier. Yeah, probably B tier. Like he's gonna be able to kill horses and stuff. The fight will go to the ground, and then you're going to have to rely on him to be a competent player and get off of his damn horse to peel for you and then like take the fight to the ground. Your fight is much better on the ground than it is on horseback because one character doesn't have the dedicated mounted skills, but you never know. You know, it's it could be it could be okay. You could learn to play together with it. The bear lancer, I'd say this is probably slightly above the mounted archer because you have the potential to dismount people and just skip that horse part of the fight and go straight to the ground fight um especially with mana king if you go earthquake um he can roll up next to you and just dismount or if you earthquake somebody he can ride by on his bear going mock jesus speed and just rail somebody with your with his lance and do a ton of damage uh so that symbiosis would actually be not terrible you have enough mana to dismount multiple people uh if your foot mage is competent enough to be able to death hand himself out of bad situations or turtle up like say you're in a building or something like that or there's a tree nearby that you can kind of turtle on um the, the builds get a lot better so We'll pause here, guys. Uh, we'll break this into two parts. I'll make the second part of this video immediately available for members. If you're not a member, click that little button next to the subscribe button to click and join. You get access to videos early. I do appreciate you guys watching this first part of the video. Thank you so much. The second part of the video will go live in a week. And 